The sky can be the thing that is what really draws us to a painting subject right at the get-go. But sometimes we can lose track of that along the way as we're painting. And instead of focusing on the sky as something that can create a really dramatic element in the painting that actually ties the whole thing together, something that is a critical part of the composition, sometimes we treat it as an afterthought. And when that happens, we're not really taking full advantage of that thing that drew us to the subject in the first place. But painting the sky doesn't have to to be that complicated. Doesn't have to be that challenging. I've got several steps right here, tips that'll help you make it way more simple. Let's dive right on in. Number one, consider the sky as part of the overall composition. Think about the big shapes, the overall relationship of those shapes in the sky to the composition as a whole. Pay attention to that overall pattern, to the overall relationship of the cloud and sky forms. Number two is to be bold with your mark making. Don't be afraid to think about treating the sky as an area that can be part of creating strong visual interest. Use your largest brushes or knives. Think about using thin versus thick paint. Step or tip number three. Study the colors, particularly the hues and the values that you see in the sky. Practice observation. What do I mean by that? Spend a good deal of time looking in fact, as much time looking as you do painting. The more you actually see, the more you will see. Don't let what you think override what your eyeball sees. Vary the blues of a clear blue sky. Look here at this particular photograph. There are lots of blues present in that sky. And it changes from top to bottom and left to right. That's based on where the sun is. Use more than one blue as you're mixing your colors. Don't rely on one single tube of paint to try to create all the blues of your sky. And remember, that a clear blue or a clear sky isn't always blue. Sometimes it's orange, sometimes it's yellow, sometimes it's pink, sometimes it's violet, and yes, it actually can be a pale green as well, depending on the atmospheric conditions, the lighting, the time of day, and the time of year. Also remember, look at the sky in relationship to the value of the land. The two things are connected. We have a tendency to automatically assume that the sky is always going to be lighter than the land. This is not always true. It's usually true, but not always. For example, here when we look at that photograph in black and white, we can tell that the clear blue sky at the top of the picture plane is significantly darker than the blue that's close to the horizon and it's significantly darker than a chunk of the land. So trust your eye, not what your brain tells you, it already knows. And then in our last tip, I want you to think about using atmospheric perspective not the oversimplified form that a lot of people recite by rote, but true atmospheric perspective, understanding that the impact of the atmosphere on color, shape, form, and edges is going to be dependent on where the sun is in relationship to where you're looking. 
If you're looking away from the light, as in this image, then you're going to have diminishing contrast as you move towards the background. If you are looking towards the light, as in this, oops, as in this photograph or this painting, then you're going to have more contrast in the background than in the foreground because you're looking directly towards the light and it's going to create a silhouetting effect along the horizon line. Make sure you understand atmospheric perspective. Not real sure about it? I've got a link for you right here where you can dive into it a little bit more deeply. Let's review these four steps one last time to wrap up here. Number one, think about the sky as part of the overall composition not as an afterthought to the rest of your painting. Make it a key component of it. Number two is to be bold with your mark making. It's going to add so much more visual interest to your composition. Number three, pay close attention to the values and the hues and trust your eyeball and what you've observed. Last but not least, number four, Use atmospheric perspective. Think about where the light's coming from. Is it behind you or are you looking towards it? Because that's going to change how you approach atmospheric perspective. If this has been helpful, and I hope it has been, just wanted to let you know that we have an upcoming live virtual workshop, Cloud Sky Land and Water, coming up December 2nd through the 5th. And if you'd like to dive in more deeply and study how to really integrate these elements together to create stronger compositions, then check out the workshop. The link is going to be below. Happy painting, everybody. I look forward to talking with you again soon. Bye-bye for now.